Hello, welcome to another video. It's been a minute, but we're back. I just wanna make a quick video here and talk about some of the resources and things that I've been paying attention to to try and get a little bit better at specifically client-side hacking. It's kind of turning into a big thing and we'll talk about some of the reasons why. I definitely don't have any, like, or not anything, I don't have everything on the short list. So if there's something here big that I missed, feel free to send it my way. That's the best part about doing this YouTube channel and sharing stuff is that if I miss stuff, you guys get to feed me more stuff as well. And we get to crowdsource learning as well. But this is some of the extensions, some of the learning tools that I'm using, blogs, resources, etc., for specifically client-side hacking which means everything in your browser pretty much is how is how I put that, right? So all the all the JavaScript that loads in your browser, stuff that happens client side, once, you know, requests start going back and forth to the server, I kind of consider that client or server side, right? So we're trying to stay client side here and use as much of that as we can to find issues and stuff like that. So we can go through the extensions first. I kind of have a list here of all my tabs. I, I tried to, you know, make sure I'm all ready to go. So the first thing with the extensions is these are all the extensions I use specific to client-side hacking that I think are interesting and worth using. The first one is, and again, these aren't in any particular order. The first one is called Gecko. It's by my buddy Bus Factor. This is, again, all this stuff will be linked in the description after this, but Gecko is specifically a Chrome extension for automating CSPT discovery. We can do videos on extensions later and I can show you how some of them work and stuff like that, but it's pretty intuitive. I would invite you to download all these and test them out, read through the readmes and see what they're all about. If you don't know what a client-side path traversal is, some of the resources later will help you out for learning resources, but this is to help basically automate and find client-side path traversals in the background while you're browsing, while you're exploring the application, while you're testing inputs, all that kind of stuff. This just helps you catch some of that stuff that might fall through the cracks and find some juicy CSPTs because there's a lot of them out there, which is part of the reason why people are getting so interested in them recently. So this is one of the extensions I use. It, it, this one is in the Chrome Web Store. Again, I use Chrome, so th these are all Chrome extensions, but this one is in the Chrome Store. I'm pretty sure all of them but one are in the Chrome Store. But his is in the Chrome Store. It's called Gecko. If you just put in Gecko, it, it'll be the, you know, the Gecko emblem and it'll be right there. The next one is Domlogger++ by Kevin Mizu. Kevin Mizu made this tool, it's very cool. It's similar and very comparable to Dom Invader that you know is done through Burp Suite and their built-in browser that's in Burp Suite. The reason why I like Domlogger++ more is because it's completely customizable. You don't get whatever Burp Invader decides to like configure and look for. You get to configure exactly what you're looking for, exactly what you're learning on, stuff you're hooking into, all that kind of stuff. It's a much higher learning curve than Dom Invader, and I don't pretend to be a total expert on using it yet, but I'm using it more and more just because it's very interesting and it does find a lot of stuff. I did, on a stream a while ago, I did pretty much all of the XSS labs that like Dom Logger would be helpful in using dom logger and it i mean it works really smooth really crisp it pretty much picks stuff up right away would show you where it is and you can exploit it and be done with it the other thing with dom logger plus plus is kevin mizu did a talk and during that talk well you know workshop talk whatever he put out like labs to basically teach the tool and they are still up Again, the, the link will be in the description. I went through some of them on stream. I've been through most of them, I think actually once or twice, but it basically, as you go through the labs, you learn the tool. So it, you don't have to necessarily learn the tool to then go through the labs. You can learn the tool going through the labs and it kind of shows you all the different use cases where you'd want it, how, how you can log things, how you can alert on things, all that kind of stuff. So there's also, you know, this little workshop that comes with the tool for that. So, so far we have Gecko and then Domlogger++. The other one is obviously the, the post message tracker by Franz Rosen. So that's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It tracks post messages, not just on the top level frame or window, but also like within a frame and a frame and a frame and a frame. If that for some reason is a thing on the website you're on, it will also pull those post messages. So it's very useful. Some of the stuff is, you know, you have to watch it and make sure it's not another Chrome extension like that's triggering the post message or whatever, but because sometimes that gets in there, but it's a super useful tool to see all the post messages. Yes, you can still, you know, go into Chrome DevTools and, and read the message of end handlers that way and try and go through, but 
this will actually alert you just like you can, you know, kind of see in the readme again, read through it and use it, use it on some of the post message labs in port swigger and you'll see exactly why it's helpful. He has a talk that goes along with it from a while ago. There's the talk, the slides, all that kind of stuff. So you can see exactly why this would be useful, how you can use this to get XSS and all types of other things, right? So those kind of three extensions when you're hacking, again, Gecko helps you find CSPT as you're just kind of hanging around. Domlogger helps, you know, hook into certain functions, basically, you know, sources that as you drop user input into a sync, it would go into that source and fire and Domlogger plus plus hooks into it and will help you find interesting sources and syncs to test. And then the post message tracker. So those are the three that I'm using right now. Again, if there's stuff that I'm missing or better options or all that kind of stuff, let me know. But these are the three that I've been using so far to really try and learn and do labs and hunt and all that kind of stuff. So the last thing I'm kind of going to mention is, and I think he's talked about this quite a bit now. So I think it's kind of common knowledge, but we'll talk about critical thinking at the end when we talk about learning resources. But basically as a prequel, if you're not listening to critical thinking bug bounty podcast, go listen to it. And one of the hosts, Justin Rhino Raider, is very into client-side hacking. He's obviously very good at it because he does very well. And he actually, on Kaido, on the proxy tool, made a workflow public that you can get in the workflow store. And it's somewhere, I already have it installed, but it's somewhere here. Let me, I probably already scrolled by it once or twice. Right here, so color top level and iframe navigations, which is, again, exactly what it sounds like. Basically, I think I froze it, so it was a good example here. So pretty much what I did is I made just a little demo page here. So this is just a navigation page. So what I did is I clicked this page and it took me to wikipedia.org, a top level navigation. It actually changed the URL in the URL bar. And then I have a little iframe on the page here and you can you know load different pages into it. And basically all this workflow does is what you're kind of seeing here is, and you can go into the workflow yourself and change the colors if you want, but it takes, it looks at these sec fetch headers and it will actually highlight any requests that are actually performing top level navigation will get highlighted in this gold. And then anything that's actually changing in an iframe, when there's navigation in an iframe, will get changed in this blue color. So as I clicked, clicked back and clicked back again, it changes blue. So whenever iframes are changing, it's blue. So if for instance, you change, you you know click a button and something happens in an iframe, like a different source gets loaded or a new iframe pops up with source, you can go exactly see where that started. And then, you know, again, you can see subsequent requests after that. So you can kind it helps you kind of when you're looking through your your HTTP history, it helps you track like when top level navigations happened and you can kind of look either in between two gold bars or, you know, find the blue bar and then say, okay, this is when the iframe is loaded and maybe some of these JavaScript, you know, resources are inside of the iframe or whatever. And it kind of helps you keep things focused and color coded and navigated and it helps you see what happens, helps you grab your eyes, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's just there. Justin put it out there. It's pretty great. And, uh, you know, go grab it and use that. That also, again, you know, client side type stuff. It's just good to have, especially since he is, you know, a very well-known client side person. So that's kind of extensions and, and, you know, some of the stuff that I would use or kind of have in mind to use again, if there's stuff I missed, let me know as far as learning or getting started, we already mentioned it, but we might as well start with it is listen to the critical thinking bug bounty podcast. They do much more than client side stuff. But there is a ton of stuff both in the episodes as well as on the Discord channel, free and critical thinker tier for client side resources. There's a ton of stuff in the critical thinking tier, but even free, all the client side hackers hang out there. Justin hangs out there. Kevin Mizu, who made Dom Logger, hangs out there. They all hang out there and talk. There's a lot of client side people there that will answer questions and help you and point you to resources and all that kind of stuff. Also, there's a ton of episodes with those guys too, which are obviously all YouTube, Spotify, Apple podcasts, whatever for free. So find those episodes, do those things. It's a really good way to learn anything bug bounty, but specifically client side hacking. There's a lot of resources out there. The other one, the one that I've used kind of to find resources and blogs is, I guess I would call it Zomasec, but this Git repo that's been around, I guess, for around 11 to seven months ish has had a lot of interesting resources for me. They split it out into interesting stuff. 
you know, so there's challenges down here. So you can go like test yourself and see solutions and stuff like that. I mean, Port Swigger isn't in here, but Port Swigger is a pretty obvious one. Port Swigger is just always a resource to challenge and do labs. And they do have labs on a lot of this stuff. But they have some video series here. They have some blogs. These are all good blogs. Again, Beyond XSS is one I'm going to call out. This is the Beyond XSS blog. I would definitely read this. Maybe not right away. I would get some of the concepts down first and then read this. So get some of the client side concepts down and then co-read this. So when you're talking about same site, same origin, some of the stuff, CSP, whatever, you know, get those concepts and then come read this would be like kind of my recommendation, but definitely read that. But I think a lot of the blogs, there's write-ups. So I think like there's like a post message vulnerability right up here. There's Dom XSS right up on Gmail. There's so there's a couple Google VRP reports in here. I haven't read everything, but I've read, you know, some of it, especially, you know, I'm reading through obviously Yusuf's blog, I will say is down, but don't be discouraged because the Wayback Machine is always there for you guys. So I at least something unless something changed, I mean, let's check here just to be sure. Yeah, so whysam.com why is down, Yusuf's blog is down, but you can always Wayback Machine it. That's what I did. I Waybacked it. I downloaded it all as a PDF. He's like one of the top bug bounty hunters on Meta. Maybe he is the top. I don't know. I haven't looked, but he does very well in Meta, and he does a lot of client-side hacking too. So worth checking out. I mean, all these blogs are worth checking out. I would hit up all... Oh, they did put Port Swigger down here, I guess, specifically in Prototype Pollution. But yeah, so I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff here. There's some There's some books and stuff here to do. I mean all different kinds of stuff. So this is something that I kind of went through and I mean, continue to kind of go back through and look at. And then again, specifically beyond XSS. I mean, the other thing is really learning about the client side stuff has been a big thing for me. Again, I don't pretend to be an expert. There are experts out there who do very, very well, specifically with client side hacking, but I've really focused. My beginning has been on a lot of specifically browser security controls and client-side security controls. There's actually a lot out there and there's a lot of concepts out there that when you look at them and like how they work with each other, it, it, it makes sense why like certain issues and certain kinks in the armor appear. So how certain windows interact, like, like what post messaging is, iframes, navigations, all that kind of stuff. I actually had a few conversations with Justin, with Ryan Rader, Justin from Critical Thinking and I learned very quickly that some of the things I assumed were true about frames or like what, you know, for instance, the opener can do to a frame, like are actually not true or wrong, or there was more to it or, you know, whatever. So reading some of like the MDN docs, literally, and like some of that kind of stuff and the RFCs and documentation and whatever is really worth it for some of the stuff, because that's really where the bugs are found is going to be like, in those, those niche areas. And I think that's where a lot of the client side hackers, at least in my opinion, from what I gather from coming through a lot of this and really trying to get into it is really, that's why like, as the knowledge goes up as the success in this area kind of goes up. Cause if you don't a hundred percent kind of grasp like the underlying topics, it's kind of hard to then use them, like weaponize them as an attacker. So you, you may just like actually just look over bugs but truly. Cause I'm sure I do. So the last thing I will say is with client side stuff, another thing to look into that I know Justin talks about a lot. So again, if you go back and look at the critical thinking stuff, you'll see it. And I think it is talked about. I, I'd have to find some of the write-ups or some of the blogs that talk about it. I think it's one of these like JavaScript analysis ones. It might be this series or whatever, but it's a big thing is finding client side routes specifically. I know Justin has harped on this a ton in critical thinking. I know I've heard other client side hackers harp on this a ton. And a lot of people who are in like the JavaScript analysis game, you know, deminifying, deobfuscating, like pulling source maps, whatever, all talk about this as like such a huge thing is pulling the JavaScript in the client side and using it. You know, I mean, yes, looking for secrets, looking, you know, for stuff like that, but Really, I mean, for these single page applications, pulling all of the JavaScript, you can use a tool like JX Scout to do that. We will link JX Scout too, but I suppose we can do it live. JX Scout Git, whoop, GitHub. Let's see what we find here. There we go. There's a, it extends into Burp and Kaido, I'm pretty sure. And it will basically just download all of the JavaScript for you and bring it into VS Code so you have it locally. It does some other stuff too. I do think there's like a paid version of it now, but I, I, I'm pretty sure there's a free version of JS Scout that hooks into Kaido and into Burp that will then just pull the JavaScript for you and you can have it locally and you can read it basically like code in, in 
VS code, right? You can download it straight from DevTools too and like just do it yourself. And you know, there's ways to do that, obviously. But this is a good tool that that hooks right into your proxy and will do it automatically as well. And and you can just see it like as you hit JavaScript files, it just loads them into VS Code and you can look at them in an actual IDE and you know, we'll pretty print them and stuff like that. So this is a good tool, but I would definitely recommend like part of client side, the huge part of client side is obviously the JavaScript. Like that is the client side stuff. So looking for paths, looking for like those sources and sinks, tracing user input, all that kind of stuff. Like, like you can see some of the stuff happening up here. It's like paths, queries, stuff like that is huge. And again, I'm sure I'm not covering everything. This is just something I've been really interested in recently. I know I do a lot of recon videos. So on the manual side, I've really been trying to understand what happens in my browser, why it's important, why it's could be dangerous, all that kind of stuff. As far as manual hacking goes, this has been a real interest for me. I definitely do not pretend to be an expert on this. I would love to hear more feedback or interesting resources that you guys have used, tooling, extensions, etc., or techniques or you know whatnot. But if you're interested in client-side hacking, this is all kind of my crash course of what I've been doing, which is really all I can tell you because all I can tell you is stuff that I've done. And I feel like I've been getting better and that it's been working for me. So if any of this interests you, check it out. Otherwise, I'll see you on stream or in the next video or in somewhere in the cyberverse. But for now, peace.